So here are the latest sets of PCBs that have arrived, uh, which were manufactured and assembled by JLC PCB in China. And they're actually quite a simple little board, and you see I've got quite a lot of them. I'll be giving a few of them away in a giveaway in this video, and I'll tell you a bit more about that in a couple minutes. These boards are actually PMOD adapter boards, and they contain a USB to UART converter on the left here, as well as an IMU, which is an MPU 6050. And basically the USB to UART converter takes USB in, converts to UART, and then puts it on these pins here, UART that is. This IMU is controlled via I2C, and those I2C, S-Clock, and S-Data are on these pins over here. I also have power and ground on these pins, and these boards actually then plug into something like this uh, generic Spartan 7 uh, FPGA board. So I can plug these boards in like this, and then they are hooked up directly to the FPGA. Now, unfortunately, JLC PCB didn't have uh, the right angled uh, headers and stocks, so I had to use these vertical ones, but that's fine. The function is still the same. I also like these boards because I wanted to try out the black uh, solder mask from JLC PCB, which I now offer on two layer boards with assembly. So I think that looks, looks pretty cool. If you'd like to order some of these on your own, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Otherwise, again, there is a giveaway in this video and I'll tell you about that just now. As usual, this video is sponsored by JLC PCB, where I also had these PMOD boards made. If you'd like to have some of your own, you can either go to my GitHub repository, if you go to github.com slash pms67, then navigate to the pmodlet repository, you can see I've got all the keycat design files as well as the Gerber and assembly files. Then you can simply go to JLC PCB, click on quote now, upload your Gerbers and all the assembly files, and get the boards delivered home to you. Alternatively, there's also a giveaway in this video. I would like to give away a total of 15 of these boards. Firstly, two randomly selected patrons will get five boards each, and I'll show you how to get to my Patreon page in just a second. The last five boards, if you go to the JLC parts library and suggest a PCB design for a future video using those parts in the comments below, I will choose the best idea and then send the commenter five boards. You can find my Patreon page at patreon.com slash phils94. Thank you so much for your support already, and it would be great if we can get a few more patrons on board. Again, two randomly selected patrons will get five of these PMODLED boards each. Otherwise, if you don't feel ready to become a patron yet, you can go to the JLC PCB parts library and search for maybe one of your favorite ICs or combination of ICs and devices. Let me know in the comments these parts and what kind of PCB ideas you have, and then I will choose the best one that I think fits to this channel and then make a PCB around it and also send the best idea five boards. So for example, you can look at maybe something like an analog to digital converter. Now the part has to be in stock, of course, a JLC PCB. It can be an extended part, that's absolutely fine. I'll let you know the winners in the next video. Thank you. Let's briefly look at the design of this PMODlet and there's really not very much to it. The first thing is the PMOD header, which is a 2.54 millimeter pitch header. Essentially what I'm exposing is 3 volt, 3.3 volt inputs and ground, as well as all the I2C, UART, interrupts and so forth. I also have a power LED and some sort of indicator LED which I can use or control from an FPGA for example. As I mentioned previously, there's also a USB to UART converter on this board. Now I could have gone with something like an FTDI, but they're quite expensive at around four or five euros. So sometimes I go with these CH340. You need to install some additional drivers on your computer, but they're really simple to set up. They don't require much external circuitry and they work really well. I have a micro USB connector on one side with a shield not connected, ID pin not connected. The five volts from the USB connector actually powers this chip. The chip has an internal three on regulator which needs to be decoupled. Other than that, I have the differential pair from USB coming in and then the UART signals coming out with some flow control signals. And that's all there is to that. Lastly, I have the inertial measurement unit where I chose that to be an MPU 6050. They're very readily available, uh, rather inexpensive, and there's a lot of documentation online for them. I have some pull-up resistors. I typically go with 2.2 kilo ohm pull-up resistors. This will work fine in fast mode as well. And for 3.3 volts, I think that's more than sufficient. I've got some decoupling on the VDD and VDDIO pins. The interrupt I will send to the header, the PMOD header, and I have some additional decoupling and bypassing that is required. All of that information is from the datasheet, so something really simple. And again, all of these signals, I2C, UART, and so on, are sent to this PMOT header, which is then sent to the FPGA. This is a really simple two-layer PCB. You can see we have a front copper layer and a bottom copper layer. 
Now the bottom copper layer is actually a solid ground plane, which is typical on two layer boards. You can see I've tried to keep almost no traces glowing on this ground plane, except for one short one here, but that's about it. Now the front copper layer, I essentially have all my signals running, for example, to the USB to UR converter, then to the USB connector. And you can see here, I've routed it differentially, but I've taken pretty much no care in what this differential impedance is. These traces are so short, the communication speeds are so slow, the rise times and fall times are so slow, that it really doesn't matter what your differential impedance is. Of course, this will not match with the USB standard, but in this case, it's to me, it really doesn't matter. The IMU is down here. What I've tried to do is, of course, keep the bypass and decoupling capacitors really close to the IC, and then I've routed power throughout this board. And that's about it. Thank you for watching this video. I'll let you know in the next video who the winners are from this giveaway. We are on our way to about 40,000 subscribers, so thank you very much. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, uh, like the video if you like the video, and comment if you have any questions or anything you would like to add. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.